Welcome to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast. I'm Mike Pilak. I'm a screenwriter and filmmaker who's always looking to maximize my time and potential as I work to break in. In this podcast, I talk to artists of all kinds who have seen success in their fields about their process, habits, and work ethic. Today on the show is artist Garen Swing. Garen's an LA-based artist and interior designer. His artwork ranges from commissioned art pieces for private clients to custom installations in public spaces. His artwork has appeared at Regime Contemporary Gallery, West Chelsea Contemporary Gallery, Five Art Gallery. His permanent installations reside at the Edition Hotels in West Hollywood and Tokyo, Hard Rock Hotels, and Hilton Hotels. Garen, thank you for coming on with me today. Oh, well, thank you very much for having me. All right, so you're, you're definitely super busy between your personal art, your commercial and residential interior designs and installations. What drives you from project to project and where do you pull the inspiration from to tackle all of these things? Um, that's a really good question because if I knew I'd bottle it and sell it. <laughs> no, but that's, that, that, that is, that, that is my, my secret. And it's not really even a secret. I, I treat um, my career, my job, my art, similar to a sport. You know, it's, it's not something that, that I treat lightly in, in the sense of like, oh, it's like a hobby or something I do on the side or oh, I'm going to do this job because X, Y, and Z. I've, I've, you know, I'm very fortunate enough to uh, have created my own company and, and my own um, living. As I joke when I was younger, I was, um, um, what would the, the thing to say, as an unemployable, you know, in my 20s. You, you mentioned punk rock earlier. And, uh, I think uh, I fit, fit in that category of uh, that punk rock mentality. You know, you can't tell me what to do, you know, uh, go against the grain. Um, do it yourself. Yeah, you know, oh, you know, if you want to be successful, you have to be a lawyer. And it's like, wait, what? Like, who said, like, why? And being in the arts, uh, that, that is part of my, uh, you know, my training also is, 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 is a commercial artist is that I'm selling, you know, a vision. You know, I'm a creative visionary. I'm a storyteller. I, I make people's vision become a reality. And so what, what's my drive is, is that there's two sides of this here. There's a business side and, and there's, a, there's a personal side, but really it's, it's one. So, and somehow I, I try to separate that and make it different, but the reality is the same. And, and, and what my personal formula is, is, is I set myself up to have to meet the demand. In other words, in a simple metaphor, um, this meeting today, we make an appointment, I have to show up, I show up early, and I know that I just do what's in front of me. I mean, this conversation can, can really can go on because this really is my jam in the sense of, you know, I've had a lot of nice compliments made to me, and especially one over COVID. One of my contemporaries, a very well-known artist, said to me, he said, you know what, you know, the secret of my success is, and I said, what is it? He says, I, wor I work hard, I party hard, you know? And I was like, okay. And he goes, but you know what, Garen? He goes, you've got that down to a science. <laughs> You know, and, and, and I think that has something to do with, you know, I'm sober for over 23 years. I'm the kind of guy that can be wild, crazy, and then just, okay, business. I feel like I'm like a bipolar, just less like speed reader, or it's like, ah, crazy. I was I'm like, okay, you know, like business, you know, like let's, let's talk business. And, 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 and to be able to switch that off and on is, is very difficult, at the, but at the same time, you know, it, it's that, that I believe is the key to the success is that you, you have to treat every job, everything you do, like an athlete, you know, that you have to show up and treat it, not just like to win in some like self-help tape. There, there, there's no magic bean or, or pill or what it is. It's a whole entire lifestyle regimen, just like an athlete. You train 10 hours a day, you give it your all and you, and you, you know, and you try to win. And that's for me personally, that, that's treat every day and treat all my projects. How did you make the transition from a young street artist to finding yourself in galleries and then into interior design? I flip flop back and forth. I mean, the, the truth of the matter is it wasn't, I, I don't have the street art story where I was in the streets painting, you know, doing graffiti, and then I was discovered. 
or I just went up the ranks, like like a lot of my contemporaries. I, myself personally, you know, I, I had my artwork sent to the White House at 10 years old, you know, in in a in in a, a I don't know, maybe it was a contest or or something to do with my school. I went to to a, a high end prep school in in Los Angeles. I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, and so I went to uh, you know a, a private school, and my my work was sent. Uh, you know, at 10 years old. And I think I, I, I knew that, that I wanted to do art. So I, I've been very involved in the arts at a very young age. So winning film festivals, uh, student film festivals in junior high to uh, being a little kind of like, you know, children art show type situations. Um, fast forward to the 90s. Um, I, I moved out when I was 17 years old. I moved to Hollywood. I was more of a tagger at a younger age. You know, uh, the idea of like getting a lot of spray paint and, and doing a big piece was, wasn't attainable to me. I know, I'm, you know, at, at an older age, you know, I think guys started stealing paint, you know, and then they're, you know, in their 15s and older. So for me, when I was like in my teens and, and I do graffiti, it'd be like an escape pool, you know, the whole West Coast thing. So, you, you know, you, you would do a piece and escape in a pool. You know, there was a lot of skating involved. And so we to paint your friend's skateboard ramp, to paint, you know, pools, to, the places we hung out, it was, you know, by the beach, places like that you, you would get up on. Um, me personally, I, I looked at spray painting, you know, in the streets and spending a, a, a good amount of time. To me, it was like a waste. And, 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 I, and no disrespect to, to other artists, but the idea of me having excess you know, being accessible to having canvases and art and be able to paint on things seemed to me a, a, be a, a better, just, I mean, it just made complete sense to me. Going to art school my entire life, my parents are designers, I'm third generation interior designer. Um, growing up in the arts, you know, in Los Angeles, other relatives being artists in the art industry, you know, more, more or less when I say art industry, I say like production and movies. You know, my uncle did Pillsbury Double Boy. He was an animator. My father's designer, my mother designer, Michael Jackson's house, Steven Spielberg's house. You know, so growing up in this, you know, in this world doing art, it, it, it really, it seemed very natural for me. It's more or less like, as you say, a fine artist, pop artist. And uh, so I, I grew up, I grew up with uh, the guys from House of Pain. And, and when we got signed, and um, I believe it was like 2000 or something. You know, my attitude at the time was like, oh, go on tour. I like, go on tour? Like, absolutely not. Like, I, I, I want to start this art business. I want to start, start a, a decorative painting company. And, and when I went to college, you know, I went to different art schools and, and all kinds of, I mean, I, I was going to art school when I was in high school, taking classes at, at Pierce College, you know, for airbrushing. And back then it was like photo retouch. I mean, when I, when I was trained, there was no computers. So the computer generation, that's a whole other story in itself. Like, you know, at 17 years old, I was an assistant art director for Screamers Magazine on the Sunset Strip. So, so I had a career in the, art, in the arts my whole life. So by the time I was 17, I, I was assistant art director for Screamers Magazine. I moved you know, into Hollywood by myself, um, moved to my parents' house, and then started my art career. By the time it was 95, I was 25 years old. You know, I already left House of Pain. I, I started my art career, and I was then working for like Tommy Lee and all these celebrities, Pamela Anderson, and they're commissioning me to do art and paintings. And that's when I started working on, on my new, let's just say this vision, this new style. I just had an art show uh, this weekend and uh, you know, it's been full circles, so, you know, it's over 25 years later, all these ideas and things that I started working on that have come full circle and doing it the correct way, like silk screening and all kinds of fun stuff. How do you structure your days to stay as productive as possible? I mean, I'm gonna tell you right now, I probably do more than the average person does in a week than I do in a day. If I can, you know, give one person some good advice and, and that can help one person, that's kind of like the way, that's kind of my jam. First and foremost is, is I really work on time management. If you can get time management down on any career and you treat any career like a sport, you know, so, so time equals everything. So if you look at, Everything is, I have a couple of things and I'm kind of jumping back and forth. I have a four-year program and I have a seven-year program. And when I say that is anything in life that you do takes four years. You know, you have a lot of people in life, you start something, quit. Well, guess what? You have to start four years over again. Just think of the life that everything's four years, no matter what it is. If you want to start cycling, surfing, you want to start painting, you anything. But that doesn't mean that you start it and you do something for four years and then you're a success means you put the time in it for four years, like a job. And so the reason I say seven years is after seven years, you, be, you can become like a journeyman. 
And I, I suggest for a lot of people to look up in Google, like journeyman, master. You know, I've heard these things about hours, how many hours it takes. That's kind of nonsense to me, but it kind of works, I guess, in some, some way. You know, um, I kind of almost forgot the question. Would you re repeat it one more time? Yeah, it was just the, how do you typically structure a day to right. stay so, yeah, as productive no, I, 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 as possible? I was on it. I'm, I'm on it. I just, I'm, I'm just like, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking like 20 different things and doing that. So I'm really, I'm very hyper and I have a lot of energy. But the point, but the point is, is that how I structure my days is, is, it, is by time management. Okay. And so, so I set myself up purposely. Now, if we practice this and we practice our daily routines, this all starts to come in, into play and it takes discipline. The hardest thing of life is discipline. Okay. I don't care if you want to lose weight, make money, become an athlete or just yoga. I don't care if it's just penmanship. So with that being said, how I get all this shit done in a day is waking up early or not has nothing to do with it. I think people are like, you wake up at six in the morning. I'm gonna tell you right now, every single day, I put in a minimum, a minimum of 10 hours in my trade. Right now, I haven't, the day has not started clicking for me. It is uh, 1130 and I would not consider my day started today. Do I think I'm going to work till midnight tonight? There's a possibility, but most likely not. I will probably just put in a 10 hour day. So it is 11 o'clock. I, I promise we'll start my day at this 11 o'clock situation. But mostly it's when I walk in the office. When I walk in the office, so I go to the office every day. So I set myself up with, I have an office that I go to. It's a art studio. But it's, it's a, it's a regimen in the sense where I have to go there every single day. The idea is that you put in your 10 hours every single day, just like an athlete. And if you, so if you think about it, it's not like, oh, I'm an artist. So I go and I paint for an hour a day. That's great for a hobby. You want to be a surfer? I surf three times a week, maybe an hour. That's maybe three hours a week. The, the key to my success is my discipline is I, I put in that time. You know, so, someone told me this. And it, was a, it was a horrible, horrible uh, thing to tell a, a young adolescent. I was probably in my 20s, but I, was, I had a drug problem. The problem was I couldn't stop doing drugs, but, but, but I, I, was, I really worked really hard at becoming a drug addict. Being an artist, I, going to Los Angeles, I thought that, that, you know, that one of the keys to success was this persona of being a rock star. You know, I mean, everyone around me was some famous. I mean, famous artists. People are comparing me to Andy Warhol's factory, my, where I lived, my studio, my whole lifestyle. And, I, and I'm running around at 25, which would be the equivalent of the Kardashians today. So at, at 1995, um, with Tommy and Pamela Anderson, I'm, you know, I just finished an HBO documentary, um, being their interior designer, their artist, the best friend, and the weddings, all that drama would be the equivalent of the Kardashians today. So when you think about being in the limelight at a 25 year old in the art, in the arts, you know, what, that, yeah, that, it's not that I messed with my head because I was, because of the internet and blah, blah, blah. I was, at the time, someone told me, if you're going to do drugs and party, you have to be doing art the entire time. You know, it was like, Hey, Karen, like you got a fucking problem. And I'm going to tell you right now that if you're out like dancing and going to clubs and chasing women and, you know, doing some nonsense art, like, you know, whatever you're doing, you're taking a part of vacuum and then you're putting it back together again and painting it pink. It's garbage. Like whatever this nonsense you're doing when you're high, like stop it. But if you're going to be high and do drugs, only be doing art while you're doing it. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, this is, this is uh, you know, so it was like a hall pass. It was like, you can do as much drugs as you want as long as you're doing art, not fucking off. And I crashed and burned really hard um, in the sense where, 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 uh, you know, I was unable to paint. I was unable to, to work. And, and so, so I cleaned up my act. And, and what I did is I took that same mentality, that same mentality that if I'm awake, if, I'm, if this is business, if this is the time that you're, that you're doing things, this is, you must constantly take advantage of that situation and be putting in because I was only cheating myself see, as my own boss and my own person. Yeah, and that's and that's my key to success. That I can go party, have a great time. Like, yeah, like I can go right now and go surf or do whatever I want. But the fact of the matter is that, is that I, I have people that I've set up. Now, here's the key for me. I have set myself up that I have people in my office waiting for me. I have you that was expecting me to be somewhere at 11 o'clock. I have employees that I'm going to meet ex directly after this at, at a location. We have an installation going in at, a, well, it's, it's actually at 12. So, so my point is I set myself up with these appointments. I call people. I make appointments. 
I don't wait, wait for the phone to ring. And I set myself up throughout the day. And in between that day, I stay very busy doing all the things I need to do. So if, you, if someone says, well, I want to start a business. I don't have any appointments. I don't have anything going on. Well, then, then you, every day, I don't care if it's your day off. There's shit to do. So it's like, just get it done. You have to get it done. You know, I, like I was saying earlier, I have, I have children. They're teenagers. I have children. I have an adult. It's 30. It's as far as a child. And, and I have a seven-year-old. And, and that's when I moved out when I was 17. You know, and, and the conversations, you know, during COVID and whatnot, that all these kids are falling behind in school, you know, and, and the reality is that, you know, I was talking to my wife that it's not really about what you're learning in school. I think we, we, we screw all that up. You know, we're like, ah, oh, high school's not important, like the math, and, and who uses algebra, blah, blah, blah. It's the idea of learning to start and finish that. It's not about what you're learning. It's really about starting and completing something. When you learn that in school, you can take that into the world, you know, because really all the teacher wants to do is pass. Of course, if you say, oh, we want to learn, I want to teach. Of course, you will learn. I'm learning right now. We're always learning. We're constantly learning. So that's a given. If we can just teach differently in, in the sense of understanding the, the idea of completing things, because oh, everything's relevant to me. It's all relevant. I don't care if it's going to getting gas for your car, doing your laundry, or having getting the soap, getting the gas to get to your car, to get to the soap, to get to the laundry mat is part of the process. If you really dumb it up, and that's the reason I mentioned the, the high school education day. I'm not a I'm not a genius. I'm not a A student. I'm just a normal guy who just had no direction or no real mentors in life to figure shit out and i had to do it on my own and if i could share that with you on how i did it i think that's kind of why i'm here so understanding my energy understanding who i am helps me understand what i'm going to tackle and what i'm not going to tackle so getting to know yourself is a huge a huge part of, of this conversation and if you don't understand who you are and how how you work you could be fighting yourself for a very long time so for me personally, it's like the idea, the idea of doing things, it can be very overwhelming, but I, I think that's what we, I think as humans, we, we do that to not have to do something. Um, is there anything that you want to plug or talk about before we go? Um, well, I did just finish a, a very large art show, a solo show with, um, and it was in downtown LA in the Los Angeles Arts District. And it was, at, I did that in a collaboration with, Gladys Tamara's hats. Um, she has a hat company. She makes all the, she's the Chanel of hat makers. Um, from Lady Gaga to Axl Rose, um, Johnny Depp, you name you name the person they were in the hats. And, and uh, so she, I just went and uh, did a huge mural on the outside of her building. I mean, it's right on Santa Fe and the five off, right? I mean, it couldn't be a better location. And then um, I brought a body of, uh, I don't know, a couple dozen large pieces and all new collection within the last year. Um, it was a great success. I sold uh, quite a bit of work. I'm, I'm really, really, really pleased. Uh, I say it's sold a quarter of the work already. And it's just it was like last night or something crazy. Um, and, and if you, and I believe they're open from nine to five every day. And if anyone would like to go to buy or drive by, it's a, I don't have the address, but it's Gladys. You put, putting, no, I mean, I'm working on a lot of things. I'm working on a lot of things. And you follow me at Garen design and also personally at garen swing it's g-u-e-r-i-n-s-w-i-n-g and you can just google me all kinds of fun stuff comes up next year i have an hbo documentary uh coming out i believe it's a uh, well, the time and pamela um story and i think that'll be on tnt hbo uh but all kind of, i mean i really like i could go on and on about myself all the fun things. I'm so blessed and happy. I mean, I'm happy that I'm doing this right now. Um, I want to give a shout out, I guess, to say like where I got a lot of my really good work ethics um, was being in a, a motion picture union. Motion, I was in the motion picture industry union. And uh, that was a real eye opener. Like being half hour early, um, staying half hour late. You actually start work at eight or whatever time your call time is. That's when you're actually working. Um, owning a business, you know, people take things and they think it's free and that's actually a form of stealing. There's a lot of stuff you learn when you actually own. I've owned my own business for over 30 years. I've had hundreds and hundreds of employees. I've had up to 50 at a time. So I've, I've worked from union, motion picture, you know, I'm a showrunner to production designer all the way to uh, 
well, we have paint coordinator for you know feature films, music videos, all of it. And, and I just finished doing the cover of Vogue or Russia Vogue or something last week as a production designer for uh, bit making props and whatnot. And then I just did a music video for Mickey Avalon beginning of the last year. I was a production designer on too. And and, and so so having a a, a pretty good uh, arsenal of work and, and being multifaceted, I, I, I have been asked to do a lot of like really amazing things in my career. Being sober, being spiritual, being a human, being a uh, you know, humanitarian. I'm very involved in giving back. I'm a, a surf therapist with Walk on Water. Um, I work with special needs children. Uh, I do about 12 events a year. If you want to know, like if, if you're bitching and you're at home and you're like, no, 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 no. I want to do this. I want to be successful. It, successful doesn't mean that, that you're famous, first of all. Okay. Being rich doesn't mean that you have like lots of money in the bank. You know, wealthy, it's a whole nother story. You know, how much money you make and how much money you save are two different things. What I'm really into, and this is, okay, so here, a couple things. This is something that, like, if I give a gift to someone, like, find yourself a mentor. Find somebody older than you. Or, and, and maybe they don't necessarily have to be older, but for me personally, this is my personal, this is what I do, like, like a father figure, a mother figure, someone that you really respect, someone that you wouldn't want them to fire you. They don't have to be a, 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 a boss, but someone that you would be really bummed if they were like, you know what, you're fired. Like someone that you really respect and you wouldn't want to piss off. And that's the kind of person you have to find. Not someone that you're equal that you feel you're like, I'll see you Wednesday. And then you can just be like, oh, sorry, dude, I didn't make it. Like someone like if you feel like you didn't meet them on Wednesday at a certain time, that they wouldn't be your friend. They would they'd fire you. So you have to find someone that you really respect like that. And if you find that person, if you're so lucky, so lucky, to find some type of mentor in whatever it is that you may do, you're already on the road to success. And you'll find mentors too that are full, that are full of shit. And that goes back to the wearing the belt situation of the time, you know, see what belt you really are. Because people will tell you that they know all this stuff. And later you'll find out you'll be very disappointed because that they, 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 were, they, they learned the gift of gab, you know, versus actually how to actually suit up, show up and follow through. Um, so, so with this interlude, Someone like Oprah Winfrey, I guarantee you, works her effing ass off. And she probably gets up. And I don't know her personally, but I'm just taking an educated guess here. Because I could, you can use that any celebrity. And, and, I, and I guarantee. And I, the reason I say celebrity is, is because in the arts, that's unfortunately what we look at. We look at artists and celebrities. We look at famous artists and, or, or, or actors or writers. We look at, we put them on, on this fucked up pedestal. They probably wake up very early in the morning. They do some health regimen. They eat right, and then they do a lot because you can do a lot in a day if it, you know that and, that. and that does take time management, but it takes practice. Get up and just do all those things, and the next day do all the things. And so I guarantee you that Oprah has like a family. She has a dog. She probably has um, a lot of employees. So that's just like responsibility stuff, overhead. But then she probably wakes up. She has probably an interview. She probably does a podcast. She probably runs off and does some tries on some clothes um then she probably has her tv show she's probably writing a book she's probably doing a cookbook she's probably working on a new movie coming up she's reading um for a new lines she's doing another i mean it is unlimited for the stuff that she's probably doing in a day that some people don't even do in a whole entire year and it does not because she's famous it's just the same way as an athlete wakes up in the morning eats this incredible breakfast Probably works out before they even go to the to the go to the to the fucking field to go practice their trade, and they come home and they do an interview, and then they do a photo shoot, and then they go and they have a kid and a dog, and they do all this stuff, and it's really about balance. But you can, and I'm telling you for a fact because I've done it, you could do everything, all those things, but you have to, you have to if you think you're gonna be success. If you think you're just gonna win the lottery and scratch a piece of paper, you're sorely mistaken. If you think you're going you're gonna to come up in this world by just someone handing it to you, you're sorely mistaken. It takes hard grit. And you have to second guess yourself. And you have to cry. And you have to fall. And you have to lose. You have to lose to win. Because if you don't understand what it is to be a winner unless you've lost. And if, until you win, you don't know how it is to win. So maybe you need to do something. And even if you set yourself up with, with trying to, to run a race on your first time, Everyone started somewhere. Every, every athlete, everybody started at the bottom. With that being said, when you take all this information 
and you don't be up yourself and you just keep showing up and suiting up and showing up on a daily, it's a guaranteed formula for success. And you see it all the time, all the time, especially on Instagram and social media. Some guy, is that Gary V? Tom, Tom was that, there's that other guy, was Tony Robbins or something. These are great people, motivational speakers, but they're all saying the same thing. Get off your fucking ass and do it. Totally. I mean, I'm a list person. That's, that, that's how I do it. I make lists every day. That's, that's what keeps me, you know, focused on to what I need to do. Oh, 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 don't even get me started. I, 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 could, I could bring you four, four yellow almost. That's what key to my success. I, I forgot to even mention that. Thank you so much for, for closing this with that. Lists are the most important thing. I'm so glad you said that. That is the number one thing that I do. I learned that when I was 20 years old from Danny Boy, uh, you know, my good friend, Eddie Donaldson. You know, he, he I, his list. That's me personally, and that's yes. I'm, I'm very glad you brought that up. Without a list, what the fuck are you can doing? It's like it's like trying to bake a cake without without a, a menu. You're walking around aimlessly. Yes, thank you, thank you so much for for, for mentioning the list. That is the number one important thing I do every single day. I have a list. I go over my list, but I am very passionate about this. I want to share to the world like you can do this. You can do anything you want. You know, and it's discipline. You know, and the discipline, and but I, I, I want to sleep at night. I want to feel good. I want, I want to give back to the community. Like, what's my purpose here? You know, I, I had a very successful company. I still do, but it, but it was different. And I, I switched that around years ago when I wanted to take my art more seriously. Yes, I have an art company. You know, like I, like I mentioned earlier, you know, about working in the movie industry and whatnot. It's like, yeah, I can make a lot of money, but it, I, I, what's what's my legacy? What am I going to leave behind? Like, oh, what do I got to do? Make millions doing, you know, hotels and stuff. I was like, well, I wasn't happy. I want to do art and, and I have the, the luxury to be able to do that. And I think anyone has the luxury to be able to, to, to chase their dreams, becoming a, a millionaire. That's why these guys have these like crazy, you know, uh, uh, self-help things. You could be a millionaire. It's so easy. It really is. It is really that easy, but don't get me wrong. It takes crazy ass discipline. So it's not that easy. It's not that easy. It's so easy. I would be a millionaire. It's so easy. I'd be here in my mega mansion. I'd be interviewing. I'd be interviewing you about. You know, I'd be. I'd be the, the guy in charge. But, but it really, it really boils down to discipline. And really, money's not not my driving force. I'll tell you that right now. My 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 art is and, and what I do for a living. The money comes last. Money doesn't come first. So the discipline comes first. All those things come first. And once you have a good foundation, you can build on that. Then you're just unstoppable. Awesome. Well- Garen, thank you so much for coming on with me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Thank Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, and please rate and review the show. Follow us on Instagram at The Artist's Work Ethic, and check out theartistsworkethic.com.